Okay, here is the E minor prelude by Chopin. First thing I want to talk about is how to express this piece properly. Uh, this was written during the end of his life and in the height of the Romantic period. So the left hand, we're not playing square like a computer. I mean, you can. I've heard people play it this way. It sounds kind of boring to me. Uh, you want to be able to express the tones, and by doing that, add some pushing and pulling elements to the tempo and the volume and so forth. So, I'm going to play it once, and you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, a couple things about this piece. Um, as you noticed, I was slowing down in some parts, pushing through some parts, uh, getting a little bit louder, getting softer. You need to play with the dynamic range of this piece if you're going to express it properly. Now, obviously, expression is opinion from some people. Some people don't like that type of expression. Some people are much more um, computerists, and they think that everything has got to be strict tempo and so forth. But to express these properly, this is the Romantic period. So there is a little bit more range of expression and there there is that dynamic element of you being able to put yourself into the piece. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the, the right hand. It's quite simple. We're just playing a lot of these single notes. Not so hard. So you shouldn't be having a lot of trouble there. The one thing that some people have trouble with is keeping this tempo. I'm going to do the third bar here. Uh, first measure. You'll notice there's a dotted half note on A, then we go to a dotted eighth on B. When we go back to A, it's a sixteenth to a dotted half again, so it's that sixteenth is short. Okay, so listen. So be careful not to express those or play those like eighth notes. Those are sixteenth notes. That is not the only place that happens. Now, there are grace notes written in here. I space them out. I've heard people play them quickly. It's my interpretation. You can play those how you want, but um, I like drawing out each note. It's up to you, though. Uh, the most difficult part of the song, obviously, for everybody, is the second page, first bar, uh, the part that has the turn in it. Uh, we start on B. This is the first bar, first measure. We start on B. We've got a 16th again. A sharp, A sharp. And then we have a B. A sharp, G double sharp, A sharp, G natural, F sharp, and then we get a sixteenth again, E, E, D sharp, C, D sharp, D sharp, E, G, B, D, C, E, E, F, excuse me, A, F sharp, and then A again. 
So the turn, you want to kind of get it down before you can do the chords. You want to be rising up the volume to get to this G here. You don't want to play it and barely hear that. If you look underneath, there's a crescendo. We want to crescendo that note uh, as we're building. Now the left hand, you should just do it this way. Good practice techniques, play the chords. You get really good at playing the chord changes without even thinking about them. You can do them smoothly. Then add one note at a time in the right hand. So, no problem. Then you do the next one. Now that next one is actually in between the second and third chord. So I'm playing. And I would actually just stop right there until I got that and then add the third note in the right hand. It lands on that third chord. So. And then we start the first note of the turn, the second note of the turn actually is on the chord, and the two notes after are in between that and the next chord. So it's a little tricky. The way that I would do it is go B, A sharp, G double sharp, A sharp, and try to slowly play this first note of the turn, then hit the chord, then hit the double sharp, uh, back to the A sharp and the G. So. Try to add the chord after it. Okay. And then try to put all elements together in slow motion. And then you might have it. Obviously, you're going to have to play it maybe a little faster. So you're going to have to play around with that. That party is tricky for most everybody who tries it. Some people just get it no problem, but it is tricky. And the very next part is the last difficult spot. We're starting with, this is the end of the first uh, measure of the first bar. F sharp, E, E, okay? And the left hand, we just finished this chord. Before we get into that second measure, you got to come down to a B octave and jump up to this crazy chord. A, C, F sharp, A. That's a big stretch. You gotta get good at landing that. And again, playing the left hand smoothly. Just doing it again. So get really good at the left hand before you start adding the right hand one at a time. But remember, you gotta be patient with this stuff. Um, the only other thing at the very ending when we're coming down hold you got a fermata actually take your foot off the pedal wait really relax at the ending and get draw it out a little bit makes it a little more dramatic okay hopefully that helps good luck with Chopin's E minor prelude